Cooper Flagg has been one of the biggest names in basketball and the projected first overall pick in the 2025 NBA draft for quite some time now. With Duke University this year, Flagg has the opportunity to take the basketball world by storm. We rarely see players at Flagg's age with that combination of physical and cerebral tools. On top of that, Flagg constantly finds different ways to impact the game and do whatever his team needs. We rarely see superstars, especially at that age, do the dirty work, do the little things like role players tend to do, but at a superstar level. Whether it's creating on ball, creating out of the pick and roll, creating for his teammates, knocking down off ball threes, rebounding, playing incredible defense, whatever his team needs, Flag is constantly doing it at an elite level. His versatility is off the charts and one of the most fascinating skill sets in the entire country. If it wasn't for a guy in San Antonio by the name of Victor Wembanyama, Flag would probably be the most intriguing and fascinating and sought after prospect since Luka Doncic. I'm not going to dive into too many of the specific numbers. You can find those in the article, link in the description below. But we're going to dive into all of the different areas that Flag excels in, how he contributes to winning basketball, and why what he does on the court is so desirable and why he is a legitimate top overall prospect and not just another big name that we're putting on a pedestal and creating expectations that are impossible to reach. Cooper Flag looks like the absolute real deal. I'm Tyler Metcalf. Welcome to Film School. Let's dive in. All right, we got to start with Cooper Flagg's shooting. Um, I'm not going to dive into too many of the numbers. Again, you can find those in the article uh, in the description below where I lay out a ton of numbers, percentages, improvements, all that kind of stuff. But I, I wanted to more so show a lot of the different areas um, of how Flag shot, where it's not just standstill stuff. It's not just off the catch. There's a lot of movement, and by all accounts, Flag shooting numbers and indicators are really, really promising. The biggest gripe is that his form just kind of looks a little funky. Um, so as we can see, his off-ball shooting, it he's comfortable taking stuff off movement, um, off handoffs. Again, he's not going to be a guy who's sprinting off screens and hitting ridiculous off-balance stuff like a Clay Thompson or a Steph Curry by any means, but he's also not just exclusively standing in the corner. He can hit a bunch of different types of shots off the catch. Like here, tough shot off a handoff, heavily contested, knocks it in. Here we have a really good job example of him just kind of relocating, drifting down into the corner, making that pass a little easier for um, Asa Newell and creating just a little more space for his defender who collapses down on Derek Queen there by just drifting over a little bit that subtle and innate sense of relocation and floor spacing creates just a little extra step a couple extra steps for his defender to recover to get a contest off he does a great job of squaring up again the biggest gripe with flags shooting just kind of seems to be it looks weird it looks a little funky but the mechanics are consistent high release at his height with his wingspan it's always going to look a little funky just because guys whose arms are that long they tend to but that shot is incredibly difficult to block good high release point follow through nothing but net on this one we, we get a really good angle um of flags mechanics here so off the catch ran right into the shooting pocket okay dip you know, he'll need to speed this up, but doesn't really concave the knee a whole lot. Pretty clean elevation. Elbows tucked in. Guide hand in a good spot. High release. It's off to the side a little bit, but again, it doesn't... That's okay as long as it's consistent and comfortable for him, which it is. High release point makes it impossible for AJ DeBonsta, who has the late contest here, to block it. AJ's a big dude, so that high release point is crucial. Guide hand stays there. It's not really involved, and it goes in. I, I tend to buy flags shooting at least to the point of him being 
league average at an NBA level. Is he going to be an elite shooter? Maybe not. But by all indications and growth over the last couple of years, he's, I would be shocked if he's just a bad shooter. And that's pure. It's comfortable. It's consistent. The biggest growth that we saw from Flag this last season at Montverde was how comfortable he was shooting on ball. This is a really, really tough shot going against the Boozers here. Good jab step, drive, not elite creation or handle or dynamic on ball creation by any means here, but at his size with his physical tools and this improved shooting form, it doesn't have to be. Releasing the ball at that point, this is tremendous defense. Cam Boozer is very close to blocking this, but since Flag does such a good job of elevating, keeps that release point really high, feathery touch, drops in an off-balance mid-range fadeaway against really tight coverage. That's the type of stuff that Flag improved a ton on this year and has an opportunity to really just skyrocket his growth and his impact um, in the coming years of his career. Over the last year or so, Flag has also really improved his handle, his on-ball creation, and his just all-around scoring craft. And on this one, we, we have a really good example of how that those improvements combined with the shooting improvement end up in a really fun result. So here he's just going to go set this off-ball screen. His teammate's going to cut baseline. And Flag is immediately going to pop out and go to work against the mismatch on the smaller defender. So he's as on the catch, he's just going to give a little subtle fake. And Caden Boozer here does a really good job of staying grounded and cutting off the baseline drive. But this is an improvement area for Flag where he's made a huge step forward with his handle, immediately hits Boozer with that behind the back counter, attacks the middle of the floor, ton of space here. He very easily could just rise up here and utilize that really high release point that we just saw uh, in the previous clip, but instead he knows that Boozer's going to be closing out hard and uses another little shot fake. This one gets Boozer to commit. Flag does a really good job of stepping through, showcasing that high release point, these me consistent mechanics that we've seen from him. Again, it looks a little funky, but that's mainly just because of how long his arms are. The release point is sound, the elbow, the, the guide hand, all of it's really consistent. And we're seeing it in this example after he's absorbed contact and is off balance. He steps through, absorbs the contact, drops in the mid-range jumper, floater, whatever you want to classify it as. But the, the, the shooting mechanics on their own are great. But I, I love how simple and direct his handle is here because at his size with his athletic tools with his length and his release point he doesn't have to have this outlandish bag what or if that's what you want to call it his handles don't have to be extraordinary they just have to be good and right now they are they're really solid for where's where he's at in his developmental curve and the amount they've grown in the last year or two is really encouraging for how much they can continue to grow because it allows him to just get to a spot. And once he gets to a spot, the defender doesn't have much of a chance because of his size and his physical tools. The really fun development with Flag's scoring versatility um, and handle improvement is that he doesn't have to have a mismatch to properly utilize it anymore. And it's become a real weapon and made him a real, real threat in isolation possession. So again, here he's on ball, no mismatch here, just right away early in the possession going against Cam Boozer, and he just goes to work. It's simple, it's direct, but it's effective. There's no wasted movement. There's no unnecessary flash. Flag knows what he wants to do, and he just uses one or two quick, decisive moves to get to his spot and execute. And that's all you need from him in terms of on-ball scoring. So great little, I love this in-and-out move here. That's nasty. That is absolutely nasty. Um, it's, not, it's not crazy, but it's super quick. It's really crisp. It's tight between the legs, sets up Boozer. The way that he extends with 
that right foot there gets Boozer leaning a little bit to his left, and Flag does just executes that in and out dribble perfectly, attacks back against uh, Boozer's momentum, gets downhill. He's re- Flag is really confident and comfortable going to his left, elongates his strides, and then uses his length and his body to get rim side of Boozer, shield the ball, extend with his left hand with that off hand, drops in the layup. That's awesome. It's not going to make a top 10 list. It's not going to be on some highlight reel of handles of him breaking someone's ankles, but it's decisive, it's quick, and incredibly effective. The next major leap I expect that we'll see from Flag's offensive game is just the continued growth of his playmaking. Now that he's really grown into a dynamic on-ball scorer, that scoring gravity is going to only increase And it's going to create opportunities like this. Again, similar to his handle, there isn't anything overtly flashy or manipulative um, here with Flag's playmaking, but it's a testament to just efficient craft and just making the right decision, being incredibly effective. So he's just going to run off this pin down into the handoff with Derek Queen. And as Flag comes off this handoff, um, his eyes first immediately go to the help defender. So now he knows that his defender was playing trail defense, chasing him over the screens, and that Queen's defender is playing at the level. So he now knows that he has two defenders on him. He can also see both defenders on the weak side here as his teammate relocates to the opposite corner. So he knows that he has a 2v1 mismatch over here with Asa Newell and Derek Queen rolling to the rim, and he's just going to be patient and just sees, just waits to see how it plays out. So as he kind of extends that dribble, he's staring down Queen, which forces Newell's defender to collapse down on him to try and take away the roll since, uh, since Queen's Defender is now completely switched onto Flag. Flag's initial defender is now is now bolting back to recover to try and switch back onto Queen. And there's no communication here. At the same time, Newell does a great job of just kind of popping out to the wing here as Queen attracts all of the defensive attention. Flag reads it perfectly. Live dribble over the head pass right into. Newell's eh, a little high, but good enough where, and Newell's wide open enough where he's able to effortlessly reset, knocks down the open three. Again, not rocket science here, but it's patience and it's a level, and it, it, it's a testament to how much the game has slowed down for Flag over the past two years and how just effortlessly he reads and counters this situation. So we saw Flag be put in motion and kind of be a playmaker um, in more of an off-ball role. And now, even though there's some a bit of window dressing on this, this is a fun example of Flag creating a, basically out of a side pick and roll um, as a more of a primary creator. So initially, just kind of sets off-ball screen, but it's all just to create a little bit of space um, and miscommunication generate a little bit of chaos um, among the defense to set up a side pick and roll between flag and Newell here. So as flag comes off this screen, Newell's going to roll hard. And again, bit of miscommunication here on the defense. Newell's defender is playing at the level. He's switching and, and AJ DeBonsta here isn't communicating whether he's staying with Newell or coming back to flag. At the same time, Liam McNeely has circled out and is drawing his defender back out to the perimeter. So Newell has all this space in the middle of the lane to roll into because no one's protecting the rim, and both of these defenders are now on the opposite side of the rim as Newell. So Flag sees this, does a really good job of stringing out that dribble just one more step, gets both defenders who are now above the free throw line. No communication here. Flag recognizes it right away, but they both have really good length. Um, So Flag knows that he has to get it over them. He elevates, changes the release point 
of this pass, layers it over the defense, leads Newell perfectly to the rim for the easy dunk. A lot of this is miscommunication by the defense, but it's also Flag recognizing that miscommunication and capitalizing on it. Flag still has to read the the interior defense or the lack thereof and see that this guy is relocating out and following McNeely and that both of these weak side defenders, no one's hedging in to the lane. No one's cheating down and trying to help out and take away this role from Newell. Also, the craft of changing the release point flag is huge the fact that he knows that he has to not only jump but also release from over his head to get the pass to newell it's just intuitive stuff with him and layers it not just over debonsta but also over 22 here two outstretched hands puts it only in a place where newell can catch it and in a place where newell can not only just catch it but it also carries his momentum straight to the rim right off two feet quick bounce easy dunk all right I I absolutely love this clip because it takes everything that we've talked about with flags offensive game so far and puts it all together it's rebounding it's effective passing it's a bit of craft it's shooting gravity it's improved shooting form and this is just chef's kiss Um, and just a real testament to all of the different ways that flag impacts the game and it's really high level superstar stuff um and it's all done at a simplistic level so from here flag catches it immediate hops into the catch and shot fake gets a defender to bite again goes back to the that improved shooting mechanics and improved shooting efficiency that now cooper flag has legitimate shooting gravity that a little shot fake off the catch, gets a defender to leave his feet. Flag does a great job, just rip through, drive, attack that high foot, attack his momentum, attack the middle of the floor, which draws the rotation from two defenders. Now, Flag could hit Newell in the corner here, would be fine, open corner three, but that would also basically be the end of the play, where any advantage or continued advantage throughout the possession would likely be gone and it would either be a made shot or a missed shot and that's it instead flag kicks out to the top of the key to the middle of the floor where a myriad of things can happen uh right could take an open three here he could kick it he could drive there are a whole bunch of different things just the options of kicking to an open teammate in the middle of the floor are a lot higher than in the corner corner wouldn't be a bad play this just happens to be a better one so kicks out to right. Right's not much of a shooter, unfortunately. Um, and he attacks middle, kind of draws this defensive rotation, attacks, kicks out to his teammate in the corner. But again, all of these secondary rotations stemmed from Flag initially dispatching his defender with the shot fake, drawing two defenders on the drive. He occupied three defenders in the matter of three seconds and creates this open look, attacks the closeout, wide open three doesn't get it to fall but this entire time after flag kicked out here he's establishing low post position because he's expecting either that floater to go up or this shot to go up and he's not quitting on the play he's staying in the the muck of it and leveraging his guy he's trying to push him out of the lane but flag is big enough he's strong enough where he's able to hold his own here Then once that shot goes up, he has the length to go over the defender and immediately rise up those consistent mechanics, protects himself with the with the leg, a little bit of a dirk fadeaway here. Gets a bit of a shooter's bounce, but hey, that's what improved shooting mechanics do do for you. So again, just one more time, full speed, attack the closeout, simple drive and kick, smart play. Don't quit on the play, don't bail out of it. You know that you're an awesome rebounder. Established position, knock down the putback. Uh, that rocks. Flag's offensive game and his improvements have been fantastic, but his defense is what really gets me excited. I, the upside with his defensive versatility is truly outstanding. Um, and here we we have him going against AJ Debonsta, and he just gave him absolute fits. So let's just kind of break this down. So at at his size, guys typically don't move like this. But 
the flag isn't most guys. So we're going to just kind of go slow motion here. So from the start, just initial poke at the ball, disrupts the play right away. He, the just come across half court. They're trying to just set up a little brush screen here, you know, just something to create a mismatch or knock flag away from the ball. And flag is having none of it, uses his length, disrupts the ball handler right away, forces Debonsta to spin out of it. And flag flag turns and chases, but he doesn't the entire time he's crossing his feet here and kind of turning his hips never go parallel to the baseline he's making sure that he's staying square on Debonsta's shoulder so that when and if Debonsta cuts back he's able to flag is able to quickly flip his hips back and reestablish position which is exactly what he does so he immediately kills his momentum on the crossover reestablishes squared up stays rim side and now he's moving his feet again. He's in that low defensive stance the entire time. Flag is like 6'9", and he's in this defensive stance against one of the top high school prospects in recent years. You love to see it. So again, now DeBonsta attacks to the left. The right side didn't work. Let's go left. This time, Flag does a much better job of sliding his feet, staying square, and that does... that forces DeBonsta to stay outside of the perimeter or outside of the, the three-point line. He can't even get inside the arc. He can't penetrate at all. And that's all because of Flag's combination of fundamentals, tenacity, and strength. Now, this has not gone ideally for DeBonsta, so he's desperate to get, get rid of the ball. Flag is still attached. He's hounding him. And that length, again, the accuracy on the swipe here, he very easily could have fouled him. DeBonsta has the ball out away from him, desperate to get rid of it. Flag capitalizes, uses his quick hands, which we'll see in the shot blocking stuff coming up in a minute, pokes the ball loose. Now they're off to the races. He's pushing in transition, drags two defenders, gets one off his feet, dumps off to Derek Queen. Easy layup. Just one more time because... I absolutely adore everything about this defensive possession from the competitiveness to the fundamentals to the footwork. Man, that that that's NBA level stuff. That is all NBA defense level stuff. And then the mindset to immediately push and create an easy basket for his teammate. You love to see it. All right, for, from an execution standpoint, from a fundamental standpoint, uh, this one doesn't come close to that previous clip. But it's more so a testament to just how freaking long Cooper Flag is and how much room for error he has because of that length and that ability to to locate the ball and really just his exceptional hand-eye coordination. So he has his man is out on the opposite wing here. Off ball positioning is fine. Ball swings and Flag's not totally into this, but he just times it to perfection um he what's scary here is that he just kind of seems to be going through the motions and as the amount of how quickly he closes down this space is really impressive and the ability to time his jump to perfection the shooter never had a chance so not only does Flag do a great job of closing out here, blocking that shot, but now he's like, all right, let's go. Clock's running down. Let's go get a dunk. Testament to the athletic tools, the situational awareness, and the hand-eye coordination. The most devastating um, part of Flag's defense is his off-ball defense, uh, whether it's jumping passing lanes, being a weak side rim protector, just his combination of athleticism, length, and awareness – is it can totally take over a game. And we don't typically get to say that about many off-ball defenders. Um, so we saw how good he was on ball, but now off-ball. So his man's just going to circle through here. This is a set that we see in the NBA a lot. Um, and his man's going to, as his man relocates to the opposite corner, flag is 
keeping his eyes on the ball and being aware of everything that's going on. He's not just focused on his man. He's not just focused on the ball. He's keeping the entire floor, the entire play in front of him and soaking it all in so he can be in the right place. Because ideally, Flag's man would drag him to the opposite corner and take him out of the paint, but Flag recognizes that this opposing guard is curling off this back screen and looking for this backdoor lob. So he timed, he stares down the ball, times his jump to perfection, deflects the pass, takes away the lob. He's constantly keeping his head on a swivel, being aware of everyone on the floor and what everyone wants to do, not just him and the ball, or not just his man and the ball, but everyone around. If someone's in motion, odds are Flag has taken notice. The highlight plays, the blocks, the steals, those all rock. They're really impressive, but stuff like this is just as impactful. This is an awesome play, and seeing this type of discipline from a kid his age, really, really rare. So Boozer is going to be at the top of the key here, has a mismatch, and he goes to work the entire time. Flag is acting as that weak side rim protector. And he knows that he's going to have to help out here as Boozer lowers his shoulder, completely trucks his defender. Flag is there the second that Boozer gets a clean look at the rim. The timing here is absolutely perfect from Flag because he knows that his teammate probably doesn't have a shot here of kind of holding his own. And the second that that Boozer's there to go up, Flag is ready to meet him. What's awesome here, though, on that shot fake, it would be so easy for Flag to jump at it. And most kids his age, most defenders his age would. They'd be desperate to block one of the best high school prospects in the country, uh, one of the best high school recruits in the country. But Flag has that discipline. He has the awareness to stay grounded, stay vertical, doesn't foul, forces a bad miss, gets the rebound, and immediately goes in the other direction. This this type of discipline with these physical tools at this age is exactly what leads to a guy like Cooper Flagg growing into an all-NBA level defender. Don't worry, it's not all just forced misses. We have some fun blocks here too. Um, and this one against AJ DeBonsta. So as DeBonsta pushes in transition here, he likes his matchup against Liam McNeely, who has good size, really strong player, not exactly the quickest. And DeBonsto wants to attack. He wants to get downhill. So as he attacks, Flag sees the aggressiveness. He's at the elbow here, acting as the weak side shot blocker. And he times his jump to absolute perfection. McNeely does a really good job of kind of holding up DeBonsto, keeping him outside the lane, not allowing him to just get a clean look at the rim. And that ability to just delay DeBonsta a little bit allows Flag to rotate over. By the time that McNeely is kind of out of the play now and DeBonsta is hoping to have a relatively clean look at the rim, unfortunately for him, Cooper Flag is already there, lurking, ready to swat that shot away. He utilizes his length, shows off the hand-eye coordination again, blocks it, but he blocks it under control. It'd be really fun if he swatted it into the 10th row, But by controlling it and keeping it in bounds, he's now able to give his team an extra possession, get out in fast break, and look for an easy hoop going the other way. It's way more meaningful and impactful doing that kind of stuff, um, even though it may not make the absolute highlight reel of disrespectful blocks or whatever. But the the timing here, the control, the hand-eye coordination, exactly what you want from a weak side shot blocker on this one this one really feels like knowing your scouting report Um, and again just real testament to flags ball location and hand-eye coordination ability so from here DeBonsta has the opposing guard on him and he likes his you know this potential mismatch in the post and from the start flag just takes a little peek over his shoulder Sees his man out near half court. Cool. Don't have to worry about him anymore. Now let's go hunt. Let's go make a play. 
And that's exactly what he does. Again, he syncs up and coordinates his timing so perfectly with the ball handler. The amount of times that he does this, it's like he's in their head and he's knows he knows exactly what DeBonsta wants to do and when he wants to do it. He elevates with him. Great job of locating the ball, avoiding the head, avoiding the arm, avoiding the hand, only getting ball and blocking it. Almost again, almost kept it in bounds, landed on the line. But the the timing here, the awareness of where his man is and how quickly he can pounce on DeBonsta here, it's special. Flags, length, and athleticism and uh, hand-eye coordination really come into play in terms of jumping passing lanes as well. He's just a threat at all times on the defensive end. At this point, I mean, Prolific can't even get the inbounds in. So on the screen, Flag and McNeely, a uh, little back screen, F McNeely communicates the switch. Flag is a little late to fully accept it. He's desperate to get back to DeBonsta, but sees that McNeely has him and immediately bolts back to his new assignment. Inbounder thinks that's enough space. Flag disagrees. The amount of space the flag eats up in the blink of an eye. <sighs> Good luck. Shows off the ability to locate that ball, pick it off, use his length, elevate, and then just control it and immediately go in transition. Two steps and he has his defender beat, secures it through the dig, changes the location to the other side to avoid the late block, monster dunk in transition. It's really translatable. It's superstar defender type stuff. So much fun. Cooper Flag is very much the real deal. When I saw him at Nike Hoop Summit, it was hard not to be incredibly impressed with his IQ, his work ethic, his leadership. Whatever his coaches asked him to do, whatever his teammates needed him to do, he did it. And that came through on the film throughout high school, throughout AAU, all the time. Even with Team USA, he's always out there doing the little things. He plays like a role player, but with superstar capabilities and a superstar level impact. And that's the type of play style. That's the type of intangibles and production and archetype that we constantly see translate to a really high level in the NBA. It would be shocking at this point if Flag completely burned out. We've seen how impactful his defense has been for years, going back to when he was 14 and first bursting onto the scene. He made a name for himself on the defensive end, and it's only gotten better. On offense, that was always a big question mark. But year over year, we've seen the handle improve, we've seen the passing improve, we've seen the shooting improve, and we've seen the processing speed and the feel improve. If we've seen that type of improvement just over the last two years, who's to say what the next five are going to look like? I know it might seem hyperbolic that we're just kind of blowing smoke, but everything Cooper Flagg does on the basketball court is superstar level stuff. If he's not the first pick in the 2025 NBA draft, I'd be shocked. But it probably means that we have an incredible draft class. Don't sleep on Cooper Flag. Don't overestimate it. Don't overthink it. He's a superstar in the making, and his versatility is really, really special.